Everyone loves the weather, right? You have your weather stories. I always watch the weather, and so all my friends are always asking me, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? It's kind of cool to know how a lot of people are trying to figure out how it works. Where better to learn about weather and see scientists in action than here at the Space Science and Engineering Center at UW-Madison? And the really great thing about it is that atmospheric scientists, weather scientists, uh, satellite scientists are working together. We're actually learning about how our environment operates and how it's changing. You are like watching everything as it's like happening and it's like changing and changing and changing. I was fascinated by it. I thought that was really cool. A balloon is able to pull up data from out in the sky. I didn't know there was such a thing that they send balloons up every day and track the weather. We can chase weather no matter where it is. You can see anywhere because we have satellites that see the whole globe. So if there's a tornado occurring in uh, Miami, we can go there right away by jumping to the satellite imagery. We could see how the clouds are changing and where the weather system is moving. Satellites give you the big picture. Before satellites, I could equate it to uh, being blind. Satellite observations, it's sort of like alien vision. They can see at other wavelengths that tell us about the structure of the atmosphere. And what we do is try to find good ways to take that data and improve weather forecasting. Nobody else was doing this yet. The satellites that study weather began here at the University of Wisconsin through the father of satellite meteorology, Professor Vern Sumi. Who had the vision to put satellites up and actually use them for meteorological purposes. He convinced the government at that time to subsidize it. The very first successful satellite mission that viewed Earth and studied weather of Earth was built here on our campus. This is a full-scale model of the Explorer 7 satellite that carried Vern Sumi's first weather instrument. It's bigger than a bread box, but not much. <laughs> By the 80s, uh, they were the size of school buses. We were doing what nobody else had ever done before. That's just amazing that it started here and so many people use it and benefit from it. And not only did it begin here, but the research that's going on here is still very state-of-the-art. UW-Madison was one of the first places to use satellites to study hurricanes. We have a way of extracting wind information from a hurricane. We have algorithms that will look at a satellite image and tell us immediately how strong is that thing. We can determine how fast they're moving and where they're heading. We're feeding uh, information directly to the Hurricane Center, all that in real time. Scientists are even using unmanned planes or drones to actually fly into hurricanes. This is the Global Hawk. It's flying around the center of Dali right there. We want to get as close as possible because that's really where we're trying to investigate. The beauty of these things is they can loiter over the hurricane for up to a day. You have instruments looking right down the top, right down in the eye, and we can get a lot more information that way up close and personal. And we continue to develop better methods to extract information from those with the satellites. Scientists can now chase the weather on the ground too with this new mobile lab. It's a standalone research center. Here we can park it in any type of weather and we can still be inside and have the instruments and immediately deliver science data in real time. The mobile lab can study weather all over the country. You're able to run a small lab like this in the field and do science while you're out there. You don't have to wait. Several of these scientists know all about field study. I've been nine times down to Antarctica. Matthew Lazar's team manages automatic weather stations that have been gathering information all over Antarctica. We are capturing the current weather and climate of Antarctica. And we have a team that's down from November to about February installing repairing and maintaining this network of weather stations. Okay, so here's an actual piece of ice core that's come from Antarctica. Um, and you can actually see in it the actual bubbles in it. And that's all trapped gases. And that's what gets studied. The poles are very sensitive. So they end up being an early detector on how climate may be changing. Here in Wisconsin, there's some pride in the fact that, wow, we built this here. And, it, and we run it and manage it there. That's fantastic. I think what keeps us ahead of the curve is that interest in not just doing the, the research, but actually taking that research and trying to benefit um, not just Wisconsin, but the world in general. We're scientists from all over the world working together here. 
I'm from South Africa, so I'm able to contribute to my home country with the research I'm doing here. We try and look at new ways of making better observations. We have research that we've developed here that now is run routinely at weather operational centers in NOAA, in the National Hurricane Center. There's a great improvement in what we're doing in terms of weather forecast. The tornado forecasts and the hurricane forecasts all have gotten better. It's kind of important to like make a prediction so you're not like surprised by something. You can like leave the area if there's a hurricane or a tornado coming or you can go into your basement or become more protected. That's what really excites us as the researchers. Here we are up in Madison, Wisconsin and yet we could be impacting a forecast of a typhoon on the other side of the globe. You're able to advance science and provide new knowledge. We have a group here that's starting to look at flooding and how do you deal with uh, emergency management of flooding. We have a group that's looking at uh, impact on agriculture. We have a group looking at um, droughts. How do you predict those? It's about taking that research and doing useful things with it to help the public. It serves society. They work behind the scenes to track our weather and basically affect the entire world around them. Oh. Yep. Chris Veldon is so enthusiastic about his work, he was recently named Geek of the Week by the Weather Channel. It's an honor, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and he's not the only one here proud to be a weather geek. You know, my wife teases me that I have limited hobbies because work is my hobby. I want us to be doing all the cutting edge stuff. It is very exciting. You can be creative and innovative here. The sky is the limit, really. <laughs>